Hey folks, how's it going? My name is Dustin Smith and I'm with A2K, Allegiance to the King. And today I want to encourage you on how you could be a more faithful follower of Jesus Christ, our King. Okay. Today we're going to be looking at the Gospel of Matthew chapter 13. And we're going to be looking at one of the famous parables within the teachings of Jesus, the parable of the sower. Okay. The parable of the sower is one of the few parables, actually, where Jesus tells us the parable and then he goes back and he explains it helpfully for us so there could be no confusion as to what the parable means, okay? I'm going to briefly give a summary as to the parable of the sower. This begins in Matthew chapter 13 in the first uh, few verses. Jesus talks about how there's a farmer or a sower that goes and sows his seeds over a variety of places, over a variety of soils, and of course, the different soils have different responses to that seed. Long story short, three of those four soils do not produce the fruit that the farmer had originally intended. But one of those soils produces lots of fruit, multiple aspects of fruit, okay? And then Jesus goes and he's going to explain this for us, okay? We're going to see in this explanation that the sower is someone who preaches the gospel, and the seed specifically is Jesus' gospel message about the kingdom of God, okay? So we're seeing a message here about evangelism, but specifically we're seeing a message here about how different people respond to Jesus' message of the kingdom, okay? And so I encourage you to read this and to look at the four different types of soils, which refer to four different types of persons and their ability to receive Jesus' gospel message and to bring about the intended change that Jesus expects, okay? And as Christians who are dedicated to allegiance to the King, we need to look at this and to take Jesus' teachings very, very seriously, okay? So in Matthew chapter 13, I encourage you to read along with me. I'm reading out of the NASB. Jesus says this in 13, 18. He says, Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is the one on whom seed was sown beside the road. Okay, Jesus helps us very carefully here, tells us that his seed is his gospel message about the kingdom of God. This is Jesus preaching his gospel. And it's a gospel that Jesus intends for all of his followers to accept, to believe, to understand, and to bring about the appropriate faithful response for the rest of their lives, okay? But the evil one here, we can see the devil, Satan, comes and does not want people to understand Jesus' message about the kingdom of God. So the question I need to ask you is, how important is understanding in the mind of Jesus? Jesus here seems to think that understanding his gospel message and understanding the kingdom of God and its importance and not only the aspect of its future consummation when Jesus returns, but the fact that the kingdom has broken into the present with Jesus' ministry and God's redemptive act in the church today, okay? So, of course, we need to understand this, and the devil is out there trying to keep us from understanding this message about the kingdom. So that's the first soil. Of course, we do not want to be part and parcel with that particular soil. We want to look for something that is more in tune with what God has intended for our lives. Verse 20, The one on whom seed was sown on the rocky places, this is the man who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no firm root in himself and is only temporary. And when affliction and persecution arises because of the word, immediately he falls away, okay? So we can see here, this is soil number two, which very clearly we do not want to be a part of. This is someone, he hears Jesus' message of the kingdom and he receives it with joy, okay? You could probably look at some Christians that they accept the message and they're excited, they're happy, they're super thrilled, they talk about it to all of their friends, maybe their life changes in an initial sense, but the point is, they don't have firm root, okay? And their conversion is only temporary because of two particular things. Because of affliction and persecution that comes about because of this word, they will fall away, okay? So what we need to do is we need to be wary of affliction and persecution that inevitably is going to come when someone accepts Jesus' gospel of the kingdom and becomes a part of God's new creation, changes their life, and they become a part of 
the citizens of the kingdom of God in a fallen world in need of redemption. Obviously, they're going to face trials and tribulations in various ways, whether it's harassment, whether it's persecution, whether it's they lose their job, or they lose many of their friends, or they lose members of their family. It's very unfortunate, and for a lot of people, they don't want to deal with this affliction, and they don't want to deal with this persecution. So what they do is they compromise, and they take a step back, and they backslide, and Jesus warns here that these people fall away, okay? Jesus was not ashamed about saying that some people could actually fall away from the faith, okay? Jesus does not believe that once someone accepts the gospel message, that automatically they're going to make it into the kingdom of God. No, he warns here very carefully that if people do not respond appropriately to persecution and affliction, and if they don't maintain their joy and their faithful commitment unto the end, then they will fall away, which means they won't continue and make it into the kingdom of God when Jesus returns. Okay, move along. Let's look at the third soil in verse 22. And the one on whom seed was sown among the thorns, this is the man who hears the word and the worry of the age and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Okay, we get another hint there at the very end is that the word is unable to become fruitful. So we know that God and Jesus intend and hope that those who are Christians actually are bearing fruit and become extremely fruitful, okay? But this third particular soil is struggling with the worries of this age, okay? Jesus teaches that there are two ages. We have this age, the present evil age, and we have the age to come involving the kingdom of God and God's redemptive reign upon all of creation, okay? So unfortunately, Christians are citizens of that future kingdom in the midst of this present evil age right now. What we see in this passage is that the worries of this age or the anxieties of this age are things that could draw people away from their undivided attention and devotion to Jesus, the King of the Kingdom of God. And so Jesus warns us about these things, okay? We could see in the Gospels, particularly, Jesus comes into contact with lots of people who have various excuses as to why they can't give their full attention to Jesus, either they're worried about their family, or they're worried about their own wealth, or they're worried about the cost. And Jesus tells us about counting the cost when it comes to being fully allegiant unto him. Okay, And we also see here the deceitfulness of wealth. Not that wealth is a problem. There's nothing wrong with money. It's the deceitfulness of wealth. It's how money can trick us and how it can lie to us, okay? And so we always need to be careful about how money can motivate us to doing things that we might think are noble, but in fact are against the will of God. And we can see here that worries of this age and the deceitfulness, the trickiness of wealth and money are things that will keep the gospel message from producing the God-intended fruit that God had hoped that it would do. Okay, And then ultimately, finally, we get to the last soil. We get to the good soil, the soil that we need to read and we need to meditate on and we need to think about how we can make this a reality in our lives as faithful and allegiant people to Jesus our King. Starting in verse 23, and it says, Oh, the one on whom was sown the good soil, this is the man who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and brings forth some a hundredfold, some 60 and some 30, okay? So what we're seeing here with this person on whom the seed was sown, on whom the gospel was given, this is the good soil, and this person, he hears the message, okay, and he understands it. He understands it and he comprehends what the kingdom of God is. Don't let anyone tell you that understanding and head knowledge is unimportant. Actually, that's not true. Jesus here tells us that the intended soil, the intended type of people that he has been preaching the gospel for are those who hear his message and understand it, okay? We are called to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Don't let anyone tell you that the mind is unimportant, okay? Jesus is teaching us here quite differently, okay? We need to hear the message. We need to understand it fully, okay? So have you understood what the kingdom of God is, both in its present aspect and in its future aspect, okay? Is the kingdom simply the hope for you, or is it also the contents of the gospel message 
as Jesus preached it. And most importantly, the most important thing you want to get out of this is that if you've received and you've understood Jesus' gospel message, then you're going to be someone who strives to produce the fruit that we see here. Some people are going to produce lots of fruit. They're going to produce a hundredfold of fruit, okay? If I gave you a dollar and I said, invest this, and it will come out and it'll actually bring about 100-fold, you would be great. You would take all of your money and you would take it to the bank immediately right now, okay? This is the type of fruit that God wants us to have. He wants to take us from being dead in trespasses of sin and to make us alive, to make us new creation that are bearing lots and lots of fruit, okay? Some people are going to produce 100-fold, some people are going to produce 60-fold, and some people 30. Even 30, you know, taking something from $1 and bringing it into 30 is still a massive amount of produce, okay? I want to encourage you today to be allegiant to Jesus, to listen to his gospel message about the kingdom of God, to understand it, accept it for yourself, to put aside the deceitfulness of wealth, to put aside the anxieties of this world, to persevere through affliction and persecution. Do not let the devil take away this hope of the kingdom of God that Jesus has placed inside our hearts and strive through prayer, through reading of the scriptures, through emulating the life of Jesus, and through living out the fruit of the Spirit to bear the fruit that Christ had intended, okay? We are to bear fruit. We are to be fruitful people. And if you want to know what that looks like, you can look in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, and see what the fruit of the Spirit actually looks like. So I encourage you with this. I hope that this helps you and encourages you to be a more faithful and allegiant follower of our King Jesus. Again, my name is Dustin Smith for A2K, Allegiance to the King. And until next time, take care. Thank you.